Hi, David Rosenberg here for the Psychopharmacology Institute. In this CAP, or Child and Adolescent Psychiatry Smart Take, we'll examine the tolerability, safety, and effectiveness of low-dose olanzapine in adolescents with anorexia nervosa. Olanzapine, of course, is an intriguing choice for study in patients with anorexia nervosa as it is one of the medications most associated with weight gain and increased appetite. So this side effect may clearly have some appeal in patients with anorexia nervosa. That being said, you obviously, when using this medicine, given its association with diabetes, carbohydrate, metabolic problems, lipid alterations, that close monitoring is essential in anorexic patients who can be exquisitely sensitive to medication side effects. That being said, increased appetite as a side effect does have some appeal in patients with anorexia nervosa. And surprisingly, only one small study of 13 girls with anorexia nervosa has evaluated olanzapine. So this retrospective study, which enrolled 118 patients, and compared 37 patients treated with low-dose olanzapine, that meant 5 milligrams or less per day, 29 patients treated with full-dose olanzapine with doses of greater than 5 milligrams per day, and 52 patients treated without antipsychotic medications. And all of the patients had been in an inpatient or partial hospitalization setting with multidisciplinary intervention. I like the fact that this study has a control group comparator of patients not treated with antipsychotic medication and also compares low and high dose olanzapine. This is relevant as patients with anorexia nervosa have a number of medical complications and may be exquisitely sensitive to medication side effects. And unlike bulimia nervosa, where fluoxetine is actually FDA approved for its treatment, there is no FDA-approved medication for anorexia nervosa. In fact, the SSRIs are also contraindicated in the weight-depleted state in patients with anorexia nervosa, although they can be helpful in preventing relapse in the weight-recovered state. And there's some interesting data that suggests that when you use SSRIs for anorexic patients in the weight-depleted state, that can adversely impact the brain's chemistry so that subsequent use of SSRI medicine in the weight recovered state is not quite as effective. That obviously merits further study, but again, avoid using the SSRIs in the weight depleted state in anorexic patients. So there's a great clinical relevance to identify medications that can augment a multidisciplinary approach of medical, behavioral, environmental interventions. I like that this study didn't only look at female adolescents with anorexia nervosa, as is often the case in the studies published, but included male adolescents, albeit at a much lower rate, as over 94% of the sample was not surprisingly comprised of female patients. That being said, we know that eating disorders are increasing significantly in males, so including males in this type of study is important. So what did they find? Well, first, low-dose olanzapine was found to be safe and well-tolerated when used for an average of 132 days. That's about 18 weeks. Patients treated with olanzapine gain more weight than patients who were not treated with antipsychotic medication. And that's not surprising, but unfortunately, there were no differences in eating disorder psychopathology or attitudes about eating in patients treated with either low or high dose olanzapine or patients not treated with antipsychotic medication. So you got an increase in weight that you might expect with antipsychotic medication, but whether or not you were treated with low or high dose olanzapine or not treated with an antipsychotic at all, there was absolutely no difference in attitude about eating disorder specific psychopathology. However, what was very interesting was that adolescent patients with anorexia nervosa 
treated with low-dose olanzapine and patients treated without any antipsychotic medications showed significantly greater improvement in depressive symptom severity than did patients treated with higher dose olanzapine. And this is highly relevant given how frequent comorbid depression is in patients with anorexia nervosa. And it's also consistent with augmentation with second generation antipsychotic medications in other disorders such as OCD, where low dose is the rule and often has better efficacy and more favorable tolerability than higher doses that are more commonly used to treat psychosis. Like in patients with OCD, patients with anorexia nervosa appear to do better on lower dose antipsychotic medication augmentation, with higher doses just exposing the patients to more potentially toxic side effects. So the bottom line here is this is a very promising line of study. It clearly merits future controlled study of olanzapine and other medications in the weight depleted, weight recovered state, and which medications may help decrease the risk for relapse, underscoring that medication alone is never going to be sufficient in this population. Multidisciplinary approach is critical. But this gives clinicians working with patients with anorexia, a very challenging population, particularly when looking for pharmacologic interventions that may assist in the treatment. And this is a very promising support for low-dose olanzapine in adolescent patients with anorexia nervosa.